Hello, namaste yogis. Today's practice, we are going to be getting a little bit more fiery. So we will be working on Bastrika Pranayama as well as Kapalabhati. And for our meditation, we will be doing Trakata meditation. So you will need a candle and I would recommend two blocks or a chair um, or potentially a small table. So if you need to press pause and grab those items, please do that. And then we will come back and come to a seated position. So we'll begin with our first pranayama technique. We'll be moving into bellows breath. So this breath is going to be focusing on a forceful inhalation, forceful exhalation all through the nose. This will be creating some heat within our body. It will help to wake you up in the mornings as well. So we will do three rounds of this breath. With each round, we will do 10 cycles of this breath. Between each round, we will sit and observe what we feel through this breath technique, okay? So beginning with Bastrika Pranayama. Finding yourself in a comfortable position, legs crossed in front of you. Rest your palms down on your thighs or your knees. You can keep the eyes open, gazing at one place, one spot in front of you, maybe about three feet in front of you on the ground, just to ground your energy. You can close the eyes if you would like. And just first, as we do with all of our pranayama practices, we first connect to our natural breath. So as you close the eyes or gaze at one spot, to start to tune in to your breath. Tune in to the natural rhythm of your breath, the natural cadence. Observe the quality of your breath, the depth of your breath, the length of your breath. And can you begin to smooth out the breath, little by little, breath by breath. Nice, slow, smooth inhalation. Slow, silky exhalation. Exhale, release the hands down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step, jump, float back. Chaturanga or plank, knees, chest, chin. Upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Walk out that dog. Breathe. Inhale, right leg goes up. Three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee to right elbow. Inhale, back. Exhale, right knee to left elbow. Inhale, back. Exhale, right knee to chest. Gently place it, right foot down. Open up, reach forward. Hold for three, two, and one. Place your right hand at your side. Fingertips facing away from the mat. And you're gonna swing that left arm open, left foot open. Point the toes, reach with the left arm. Hold here for five, four, three, two, and one. Swing yourself back. Hands come back to normal tabletop placement. Flex the left foot. Shoot that right foot up. Bend that right knee. Open it up to the ceiling. Slowly start to shift your weight into the outside of the left foot. And come into a wild thing. Breathe. Three, two, and one. Reset right arm in. Inhale, exhale. Drop to the other side. My left foot's at a 90 degree angle. I kick my right foot through. Hold for three, two, and one. Inhale, left hand comes up in. Right foot up and exhale, step between the hands. Inhale, raise yourself up, high lunge. Exhale, deep in that lunge. You're gonna skip the twist. Inhale, shoot up. Exhale, reach forward. Bend that back knee, look slightly in front of you and come into a balancing posture. So left leg lifts slightly. Straighten through the legs, try and come into a nice deep forward one-legged split, as deep as you can go. And as you inhale, you're gonna try with all your control to bring yourself up to standing. This is the video about 
understanding the deeper meaning of yoga everyone the deeper understanding of yoga we will understand it through this concept i like to call as universal sequence understanding deeper parts of ourselves and what yoga helps us with in uh, bringing awareness to them so the sequence is of six terms six parts and we're going to talk about each one one by one yeah the summary is it's going to be the physical body five senses our thinking mind our individual consciousness our atman or our soul and the universal consciousness the togetherness of everything so let's start with the physical body our physical body is uh, the one which is our most external layer what does yoga say about it yoga invites us to keep taking care of it yoga does not in any way tell us to torture our body it does not tell us to also suppress or uh, ignore our body it encourages us to keep taking care of the basic needs of the body to rest the body well to give it healthy food to take care of the movement of the body to keep making it uh, stretch to keep making it work out and so on body gets healthy when you move it mind gets healthy when you calm it or silence it yeah so physical body is the first part of the universal sequence we are invited to see it as a temple as the carrier of my soul so we want to take care of the temple but we don't want to get obsessed by it this is happening a lot in modern yoga world yeah people are getting really obsessed really identified with their physical body unless your body is in the perfect shape and you can do all these uh, uh, advanced postures and asanas somehow we have this idea in our head that uh, we cannot really be happy or we cannot really find the goal of yoga and this couldn't be further from the truth yeah asanas are used to take care of the body but not to get obsessed by the body this is the first part of universal sequence welcome everyone i am kiki let's look into vishvamitrasana it's also called engagement pose when you engage two parts of your body it allows your body to expand or maybe in balance or in twisting or it's also called engagement pose so vishvamitra asana done on two levels so beginners can also enjoy and if you have the split in your legs you can also enjoy the full capacity of the pose um do a great hip openers before doing these poses and some of the breathing exercises maybe some of the movement maybe whatever whatever you like and after that you can come into the basic level which is standing on your knee it's a half pose and shoveling same uh, way we do the full leg stretch or half leg stretch we shovel the shoulder behind and stabilize here right back foot is tuck toes right behind my knee and i'm going to grab my outer edge of the right foot and from this position maybe little by little i'm able to open up my leg after that i want to look up and fully extend the leg so you can work with this position to this position to that position as a beginner it's really um, not so challenging cuz it's a uh, not a full split so this pose can pose can be easily allow you to move into your full capacity of the mishmitra asana engagement pose right so really good shoulder work here really good split here so when you're doing any advanced poses you want to focus on opening those area of the body priorly before you actually do the pose so if you are warm enough and open up enough you can move into level a of the same pose and level b right samakona is asana is one of the best pose and if you do samakona asana with these arms to open the shoulders and maybe on to the side as well and stay there for a while and practice your split so the hips are a big topic in yoga and we can speak about them from so many different angles 
For today, we're going to be speaking about this idea of obviously opening and closing the hips, but this idea of stillness to movement of the hips. Um, you'll notice a big difference between the shoulders and the hips and why I like to bring them up together is because they kind of emphasize each other's contrasts. So in the shoulders, there's usually quite a lot of mobility. And what we want to build for the shoulders is this idea of stability so that we can start to use the shoulders in a way that is more strong and strengthening. Next, we're going to work on the hip rotation. So first hip external rotation. So bring up and open. So like a tree pose, right? Your hips are externally rotated. Notice how this is also the position of like our warrior twos, extended side angles and triangle poses. They are all hip external openers, right? So externally rotating the hip means opening the hip. So if you look at her front leg, her hip flexors are being worked. So there's a contraction here, contraction in the quadriceps slightly and contraction in the hamstring. This is the perfect type of contraction that we want to be happening where there's not too deep and it's not too deep, but it's enough to create stability. Um, we have this lovely 90 degree angle with the knee again, providing that extra bit of stability in terms of um, just architecture so that the body can do what it needs to do. What is stretching a little bit here? So now we go into the glute. And you can see that the glute is slightly being stretched. There's a slight also stretching of the piriformis. It's not as deep as it would be in a pigeon, but it's definitely happening. And you can see that the abductors are being slightly stretched as well because the satoris, which is running from here, is getting a nice little activation. And then the fascia latte too. That's what's happening in the front leg. So much more stability building in the front leg, but still slight stretching of the glutes at the back. So the high lunge now, we've raised it off the ground. It's become a little bit more strengthening. So now there should be a lot more weight here being bared. So this is being activated a little bit more. This is being activated. This squeezing of the entire upper thigh is what's causing the knee and the ankle and the hips to stay in place. The hips are rotated forward. Again, super important. If there's any of this, you just lose so much, right? And then you start to create an imbalance of the body. So hip rotated forward. Then we start to again look at the area where the stretch is happening. So now there should be a deeper stretch here. Inhale to rise, bend your knees a little bit more, use your legs to come up. We're going to do the same, adding the mantra Soham. So we're going to be using this mantra vocally and in silence. I'll guide you through with the use of the mantra. This time we're going to enchant the mantra vocally on the exhalation. So hands on the back of the thighs, lengthening through the crown of the head, breathing in. Inhale to fold with the mantra. So hum. Raising the right arm. Exhale, bend to the left. So hum. And hold silent mantra shoulders away from the ears in breath with so out breath with hum so placing your block and choosing a hand position so maybe your hands in front of your chest maybe your hand on your hips to start Inhale, lengthen through the crown of the head. Exhale to sit down on your chair pose. So sending the buttocks back and down, bending the knees. Look to your feet, make sure you can see your toes so your knees are not crossing the line of your toes here. Slight tuck of the tailbone, so we have a long and flat lower back. Hands to the heart center. Maybe this is where you stay, especially if you have any troubles with the shoulders. Otherwise, inhale, arms up, biceps aligned with the ears. And as you exhale, fold forward without changing the placement of the legs. We're just folding forward into Utkatasana. We're going to do that three more times with the mantra. So exhale, Soham. Soham. And inhale to rise. So we talked about the front plank earlier. Yes. We won't go through the full details again, but we'll just 
show the same entry of pressing up, extending, scooping with the feet, finding this nice stacked alignment, and then when we're ready, the base will push the balls of the feet and the toes up. So here, if I just step this one side, I'm pressing and extending the front, uh, the, the pads of my feet up to the sky to help lift and support the belly and the chest. As the base doing that action, I resist the push by pressing the hips bone towards the balls of the feet. See, as we do this, you can see the hands become light and she naturally lifts up, taking them away. And if we feel good, we can totally let the hands come down to the sides. As I push in a lot towards my hips, I lift my chest up towards the ceiling. And first option, my hands can just stay there. Another option, arms by the side. Cool. So you're thinking of doing your yoga pose here, aren't you, Astri? Of yes, Salambhasana. Salambhasana, as I mentioned earlier. Cool. So notice here that I'm in control of the balance of this pose by flexing and pointing my feet. So here I can, I can balance a little bit. So I want to feel if she's falling towards me a bit too much, I can push the toes to lift her back up. And if she's tipping back too much, whoa, I'm going to fall back. I'm going to flex a little bit and bring her towards me. Flyers, your exercise here. Trust and keep your shape. Yeah. Nice. There's also variations you can do here. We did rotation in the last pose. You can do rotation again here. You can put the hands behind the back. You could even do a super woman or superman. <laughs> nice. <I'll decide. laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. And then we come back down. You come down, always connect the hands first and coming back down slowly to the ground. So I'm spotting the hips here as they lift in. Really important here, I want to switch my hand under the belly or the shoulder or chest area of the flyer here. The reason being, now there's the hands are free. If she tips forwards, I want to have my hand here to be able to lift her up and bring her back up under the belly even is fine as well. I, either one's acceptable. Making sure I keep the other hand around the far side of the hips. Again, if they fall away from me, I want to be there to grab. If my hand's on this side and under here and they fall away, I can't successfully reach around and secure them and make them safe. Exhale, slowly bend the knees, coming into chair, tucking that tailbone. Inhale, extend the arms, step that right foot forward, coming into a low lunge. Inhale, coming up into warrior. Exhale, coming, bringing that arm forward, stepping the left foot forward, stretching the arms, and stepping that right foot back, low lunge. Inhale, raise the chest up, bringing my right knee into the swing, making sure there's one fist of space here. Left arm goes through, grabbing onto the bottom here. Right hand comes up, sliding myself up, lifting the hips, bringing that left foot to the inner thigh, and keeping my left shoulder in front. My right shoulder is behind. Hands come to heart center, closing the eyes and finding your stillness. And then extending that left leg, bending that right knee, coming back into our lunge, planting your hands firmly. Take a deep inhale. We're going to come into our pikes, preparing yourself. Pop that right foot back into that swing, taking a deep breath. Inhale, exhale, and bring the feet in, hips up. Go ahead, look up. Take your right hand, grab the swing behind you. Thumbs pointing up, take your left hand, grab the other side, gaze out in front of you, lifting up onto your toes, smile and release your legs, lifting your legs, allow yourself to fly. Making sure now that I have enough swing on the back side to cover my sacrum. If I don't, I can just kick my legs a little bit forward and that brings more swing over to the back side. Grabbing onto the swing, slowly leaning back, Opening up the legs here and bringing the feet up towards the sky, wrapping my feet around to the other side, taking your left foot, bringing that left foot out, hooking that right foot over to the other side of the swing, dropping that left foot down towards the ground, taking your left hand, grabbing that left foot, and when you're balanced, that right hand as well, coming into inverted pigeon here and kicking that left foot into your arms, opening up the shoulders, 